like to welcome you all to the Microsoft Middle East and Africa Sustainability Dialogues. Uh, I'm delighted today to be joined by uh, Ivan Jakobicic, Investor and Advisor to Investment Ecosystem and formerly with Google uh, and STV. Mr. Riyad Abujaude, Partner with Middle East Venture Partners and Stefan Koster, Head of Ecosystem Strategy at Startup Genome. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining us today. Um, and we're going to be um, focusing on uh, the question today of how private equity and venture capital markets uh, are viewing uh, climate finance today. You know, is, is that changing? What are the dynamics behind that? Uh, and of course, I'd like to start with, with sort of the, the elephant in the room question really today and, and perhaps put it to all of you to give us your point of view to kick this off, which is the current sort of macroeconomic environment. Clearly, you know, financial markets, the global economies, inflation, you name it, that's all in, in, in an extremely vulnerable uh, and dynamic state. A very different picture to what we were seeing even six months ago. And of course, that directly impacts the appetite of investors one way or another. Um, so uh, if I can uh, start with you, perhaps, uh, Stefan, uh, and let me just ask you what your outlook is for to pri the private equity venture capital world, given the current uh, macro reality and how has that changed in your opinion? Yeah, certainly. Thank you. It is certainly when you look look at a period of 15 months or so, it's a story of two tales, right? The, the kind of almost exuberance as we got into 2021 and throughout 2021, almost, shall we use the word bubble in in valuations in, in rounds, particularly in late stage rounds, unheard of creation of unicorns in more than 100 cities around the world. It's absolutely staggering. Yeah, so the, the valuations really went up to maybe not so healthy environments. You as the investors here from the VC and, and private equity scene you can possibly can possibly allude to that with a bit more detail. But the numbers were staggering across the globe, Asia, Europe, North America, the same. Um, we are seeing a relatively stark correction. We've done some sentiment analysis or you look past in, into, into investment data, but you also do sentiment analysis asking VC partners, what are their expectations? And their expectations certainly are, are um coming down quite a lot by saying well we we probably will invest at the level of of previous year in the previous 12 months more likely our investment um will, will go down quite significantly particularly in late stage rounds there's a, a strong correction being predicted not so much in early stage which, which is great otherwise we always run the risk of losing a generation of entrepreneurs young entrepreneurs that are coming into our ecosystems overall into clean tech in particular but late stage certainly a strong correction so i think that's what but, but that's great i mean that's interesting stefan let me just pick up on that point just with you before i, I go to our other speakers the late stage uh sort of investment might be impacted more um good thing that the that the early stage isn't but you know is that uh, how, how tricky is that for for those particular projects? Uh, you know, late stage, everything's been proven so far. Surely, that's the, that that is something that should be continued uh, in, in the terms of getting keeping the momentum up. I mean, particularly with the, that's our view on the world of clean tech. Um, so it's very obvious we need to innovate ourselves out of climate crisis. There's no other way from our perspective. Technology centered, but of course that that's the way that humanity needs to go. Do we have enough innovation? Probably yes, probably we have enough innovative concepts already in the world that would allow us to address the problems the world is facing. Do we scale them? Do we, do we have the scaling capability in clean tech ecosystems um, that really would allow us to make a dent into the climate crisis? Yeah, let's stay with climate for a moment. Yes. Um, big question mark, and that's, that's, we call it the scaling gap in clean tech. It's getting a little bit better. Last year was, was positive in that direction record levels, including late stage finance, but it's still very small compared to what we've seen in other software sectors. So that's that's where we would be concerned. If we don't jointly fix the scaling gap, um, we will continue to not have the technology impact that we want to see. So that's that's why a decline in, in later stage finance, particularly in clean tech, would worry us. Okay, well, let's talk a bit about that that point of scale. Ivan, I'll, I'll go to you if you can sort of address First of all, the same question of how concerned are you uh, about the, the 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 sort of obviously hesitancy for continued investment at least at the moment, uh, and and would you agree that that scale investment um, uh, is 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 what's needed in terms of really getting us 
into the next stage of, of the climate finance solution. Yeah, I think uh, I think first of all, fully agree with uh, with Stefan about uh, you know the trends, and obviously we're <clears throat> we're getting a lot of uh, contagion, if you will, from the public markets. So the public markets, when they go down, with the mul- then the multiples go down. They first affect the late stage rounds, and then you know late stage rounds obviously kind of affect the early stage rounds. So there's almost kind of a domino effect. The good thing about that is that as we go further down, there is less of an impact, right? So the earlier stage rounds kind of get affected, get affected a little bit less than the than the later stage rounds. So we have gotten we, we, we've gotten that right. So I think we now we live in a very different world compared to even six months ago, if not twelve months uh, twelve months ago. So that's I think one of the one of the global trends. I think there is another global trend, which is when it comes to capital and availability of capital. I think with the exuberance of the previous period, one of the things that we have seen is that the capital, the appetite. To, uh, for risk has actually increased, which I think has to some extent benefited also the emerging regions of the world as well, because all of a sudden you had people, you know, in kind of the more mature markets who were willing and who were kind of looking for that additional uh, uh, additional risk or additional uh, 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 additional benefit, and they were looking for that in, in the emerging markets. So we have seen that in MENA, we've seen that also in some of the other emerging markets, more, more managers, more kind of uh, capital coming from the mature markets into the emerging markets, and not not only the capital, but also the know-how and uh, and and, uh, and 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 so on and so forth. And you know, obviously, with everything that has happened, we are kind of seeing a little bit of a retrenching of that. So some of the some of the managers who are kind of looking into emerging markets have now retrenched back into their kind of original position, and that has not benefited benefited us as uh, as the emerging market. But I think the, the 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 third effect that I would also kind of like to point out, which I think is you know, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, obviously, especially in our part of the world, and I'm ta- now talking more about the Middle East part, uh, less the Africa part. Uh, we have seen the governments kind of, uh, you know, pumping, uh, pumping further up and kind of being more and more excited about investing in uh, earlier stage, earlier stage rounds, uh, especially here in the uh, in the Gulf. Uh, and that has obviously been, uh, you know, has impacted the, uh, the additional capital going into the limited partners who have then kind of uh, obviously gone into the uh, into the general partners. So we're seeing more and more capital. I think some of the numbers uh, that have been shared, I think uh, uh, for the first half of this year, we have already seen more than $1.8 billion going into uh, going into venture compared to, I think, around $700 million as, 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 as late as, as 2019. So if you just kind of try to analyze it, we're looking at kind of a 5x increase in capital availability here locally. So it's almost kind of a trade-off between a global trend, which is obviously kind of pushing us into a more kind of uh, a, a conservative, uh, conservative way of looking at things, but also you know some of the uh, some of the tailwinds that we're seeing by the fact that our region is kind of coming out since emerging, it's kind of trying to take its rightful place uh, here and on, on, on the global stage. Okay, Riyadh, I mean, just talking, picking up on that point of this region, clearly, uh, you know, financially, economically, it's doing much better. We have a high oil price, and when that happens, everything's very, very, very rosy, at least in the Gulf, uh, and clearly a lot of money being invested across the board by governments uh, into the climate climate sort of uh, solution space. But, of course, that trickles down to, to private cash as well uh, and investment um sort of a positive out view for investment. But let's talk a little bit about how that investment community therefore here uh, in the region is viewing where it should park its cash in terms of the climate finance solution. Um, you know, is it going more into sort of, I suppose, uh, R&D type of startups or is it, uh, you know, more keen on certain sectors that are tackling uh, the, the sort of the climate challenge they may be they may be trying to abate? Where would you say the 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 majority of sort of the attraction of money would be going? Uh, It's hard to answer this question because at the moment in the MENA region, we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, climate tech startups uh, specifically, right? we as as a fund MEVP, we're not focused on climate tech. We're sector agnostic. Obviously, we are intrigued and and we believe in the opportunity in uh, solving uh, uh, climate related challenges. However, we haven't seen strong pipeline in the sector yet. We've seen a couple of companies, one from Masdar uh, in Abu Dhabi and uh, and maybe a few in Saudi, tackling certain aspects of climate change. In in general, I think. Uh, 
investors will be a little bit cautious here uh, f uh, in, in uh, investing in uh, such uh, opportunities. However, we'd love to see more uh, of those coming, uh, emerging from the MENA region. Now, I know that some of the investors from the Middle East are investing globally, et cetera, uh, like the sovereign wealth funds, et cetera, and others. Um, it has become a really interesting uh, uh, opportunity, uh, especially uh, around carbon capture and other technologies. But <clears throat> speaking on behalf of uh, you know some of the VCs here that I know and ourselves, uh, we don't see a lot of opportunities. One such opportunity is a is a climate data and platform, which is I, I find to be interesting. But uh, uh, we are looking at at those with. Uh, you know, with a uh, with an uh, open mind and looking at how we can build a thesis for those from the mean age, especially that R and D here and budgets are not uh, uh, definitely not as big as Europe and US. Yeah, Stefan, yeah. you had your hands raised. Yeah, please. Yeah, having two investors here at the table, Ivan and Riad, I'd be really interested if ESG discussion brought to you by your limited partners, quite probably, if at all. I don't know, but I would expect that. Does that influence your investment thesis a little, or is this is this more just a buzzword, but not 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 really affecting your investment strategies as yet? So pressure yeah. from pension funds, from larger insurance companies, whoever your LPs are. Um, no, uh, I can. Related goals, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Interesting question. Obviously, ESG has become a big topic, and our LPs are you know demanding uh, that, uh, that that the fund as well as the underlying investments follow certain guidelines certain procedures so uh, we uh, this has become a, a, an important topic it's more than a buzzword of, uh, of course uh, ourselves we have done a policy internally we have assigned appointed an ESG officer at the firm we are mandating all new investments to go to, into an ESG checklist and go to uh, go through a questionnaire etc we are developing those uh, obviously to adapt them to the region and to the startups uh, as well as our investments uh, our startups our portfolio companies we call them portfolio companies to take this topic more seriously of course we're facing some resistance here and there uh, but in general some are really important especially the the, the the governance part i think it's really on point for the startups uh, in the mina region and startups in general to you know uh, follow follow the best practices etc uh, environmental and social uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, to answer you, yes, definitely. Ivan, I mean, on that point, and again, I was, I'm glad mm. yeah, um, Riyadh uh, addressed the, sort of the difference with the E, S and G, that there's different sort of balanced mm. Uh, mm. focus on each of those at different times. Um, and Ivan, in terms of policy, you know, I mean, a lot of the discussions we have on sustainability and on, on investment into this whole energy transition, let's say, even on the energy side, not just other uh, sectors is it to do you know everyone says well the policy has to be clear before the investors can really throw their hat in the ring and that in this region policy is moving forward you know clarity is 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 being is, is getting better but that still the technology and the money is sort of ahead of policy it's, it's waiting for better clarity on you know certain things that what the directives will be uh, you know on on carbon pricing on different things that that are not quite settled and so how much how much of a sticking point is policy in in the region to encouraging or discouraging uh private investment yeah look i think uh and, may, and maybe also kind of building on something that uh, that we had mentioned um it seems to me that on a on a policy and also on the kind of the the government slash sovereign wealth fund slash investment level, uh, we're probably more ready and more willing to tackle some of those topics. And uh, it seems to be it seems that the gap is more kind of on the supply side, if you will, i.e. on the startups and the uh, and then then the operators who are kind of trying to tackle that space. And part of the reason why I'm why, why I'm saying that is because uh, I'm aware of at least two funds who are currently doing fundraising uh, locally from the from, from the local LPs and the suburbs who are focusing on ESG topics, but their investment thesis is not investing locally in MIA, their investment thesis is actually work, in, investing internationally. And it's resonating with the, you know, with the sovereign funds and the investors, and it seems like their desire and their need to be ESG friendly and kind of hit their ESG KPIs, if it cannot be met locally, then, you know, they're, they're willing to kind of look elsewhere more globally in order to kind of hit some of those KPIs. So it seems like on the policy 
side and kind of on the on, on, on the capital side, there is readiness, there is a push, but I think we probably need to do a little bit more work on uh, enabling the operators, enabling the local startups to, uh, to kind of try to tackle that space uh, 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 in, in a more focused fashion. Okay, well, and Stefan, you could have, I see your hand up again, but also, so what metrics do, you know, fund managers look for potential startups in the green space? Are there any specific metrics that they really look out for? Stefan, please comment as you were going to, and then perhaps you can answer that, that question as well. Slightly, slightly different norms, but I wanted to, to use the opportunity to ask Ivan and Andreat here. What we see in Europe a, a lot is demand generation policy coming from a policy angle, state kind of subsidizing cl climate tech solutions. We still believe we are not, not necessarily in a situation where every promising climate solution is totally profitable and competitive compared to traditional energy generation. Um, Europe seems to do a very good job at, at supporting the sector in order to make the transition, which will take us obviously for a few years. Um, is there anything similar happening in the MENA region? Just as a question, um, I simply don't know how, how strong um, government involvement here is. Typically, we don't argue very much for public funding and public intervention in ecosystems. Climate tech, clean tech seems to be a little bit of a different beast um, at the phase where we are at the moment. So from a policy perspective, I'd just be interested in uh, understanding, is there more coming from a demand generation perspective in KSA or in, or in Abu Dhabi or in Dubai or elsewhere? Um, or not something. We've certainly seen that, and I'll let the gentleman answer that for you, but we've certainly seen, we, we, talk, we do a lot of discussion on the whole hydrogen story and one mm. big argument made there is that, you know, that, that we must see demand security um, from, from, you know, obviously enabled by government policy before we, we will invest even more in it. And again, it is that security, isn't it? Uh, Ivan, do you want to just uh, uh, answer Stefan on that query? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not personally aware of major subsidies going into that sector. What I know and what I've noticed is uh, that uh, hydrogen, to your point, is, uh, is is a big topic, and this is this is being considered, this is being kind of looked at. But I think it's less kind of from a private equity perspective. I think it's more kind of from a uh, energy security perspective, right? Uh, and then I think the, the 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 other thing that I have seen uh, there, there there was some uh, there were some attempts to look at uh, the the the, uh, the the carbon credits and how the potential carbon credit market may develop. I think uh, Stefan, you probably know that better than I do. But in Europe and in the U.S., I think we're seeing quite a quite a, quite a lot of effort kind of going into that. And I think one of the one of the things that we're looking at here in the Middle East is kind of how should Middle East be positioned there, and if there is an opportunity potentially for Middle East to and even larger uh, uh, beyond the region kind of a role when it comes to establishing those new markets and, uh, and and carbon credits. But both of these are not necessarily the, you know, your typical kind of venture capital technology plays. I think both of these are kind of large infrastructure, larger infrastructure plays or kind of larger market plays, which obviously, you know, the, 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 the governments and the sovereign wealth funds would be interested in, uh, but I think would be somewhat less uh, uh, relevant to, 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 to the private sector, especially at the earlier stage. Okay, Riyadh, what is the um, you you said in your in your point that there's you know relatively speaking you know there's very little startup capital ventures into the climate uh, finance solution in the region. Why is that? I mean, it, 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 the region is so well placed, you know, with, with its technology investment. It's obviously the solar thing has taken off in a big way in terms of solar energy and and that solutions that have gone towards that. Um, you know. Why is it that, that there is weak interest, if you like, and what would it take to change that? So weak interest on the supply side, right? Supply of startups. And I think probably the underlying reason is uh, research, right? R&D in universities and corporates. I think funding for the, for this is, relatively speaking, much smaller. I don't have data, but I believe that in general, uh, R&D spending in the MENA region as well as university research is much lower than Europe and US. So extrapolating this to basically uh, climate solutions, uh, you know, uh, this is my 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 high level, you know, assessment. Uh, uh, if I look at the investments in the MENA region from a VC point of view, you'd see also a, a very little to like high tech, um, uh, high R&D, 
hardware especially startups right compared to europe compared to us and compared to china india obviously i think there's a lot of encouragement from certain government program as well as university programs and corporate programs for r d uh, outside the region that just isn't available here so i think this is the underlying region uh, reason i think in the middle east in certain places you could see the impact uh, of the climate change uh, much stronger than other regions, like if you look at Iraq and uh, potentially others, other countries, you um, you would you could you would guess that you know people would like to address these problems. However, that just the uh, amount of research to create any breakthrough in uh, technology. Now, if you're looking at more online services, superficial, not superficial, like services around uh, tech services around uh, uh, you know climate that are not necessarily. Uh, finding a solution or addressing the problem head uh, directly, I think we you need a market for this. So right now we're just not not, not there. Uh, yeah, there, there's, I, mean, I know it's a little bit off, not off topic, it's related, but there's a lot going on, for example, in the Middle East, in the Gulf, especially in the in the agricultural space. I mean, I know it's not climate finance specific, but it's solutions to how can we become more energy food, uh, food uh, secure. Uh, and 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 the and the technology that's being invested into is to do with mitigating the fact that the climate here uh, is not conducive to that. So so and a lot of startup investments there. So that's a little little segment nut graph of, of of the solution. Stefan, just back to you. Let's talk a bit about to the public private partnership. We've talked about what the governments are doing and what 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 private investment. Uh, is where, where it wants to go, but what about sort of partnerships across the board? Give us some best practices that are in Europe maybe, that could be applied here and aren't. Maybe Diana, first first of all, before we get into, into your question, allow me one comment. We did this project work in the UAE uh, a couple of years ago, and it was quite interesting to see a relatively low activation of the general population, people coming out of university, electing entrepreneurship as, as a career objective nothing to do with clean tech in particular, looking at the entire ecosystem. So that, that was certainly hampering entrepreneurship in general quite quite a bit. So I think we all need to do quite a lot more in order to really activate this entrepreneurial culture to say becoming an entrepreneur in climate, but also in other technologies is a career plan A. It's, it's, it's the cool thing to do um, and to work on that, that cultural element. If we want to have more young innovation, to your point, Yada, you asked it, why do we not see more young models? Yeah. Uh, there really seem to be cultural factors. I don't want to pick any particular emirate, but I think it applies across the EU, or EU if not, if not broader. Um, secondly, we saw quite a reluctance from what normally works extremely well in, in younger ventures, angels, uh, business angels, well-structured angel groups. We saw many, we spoke to many high net worth yeah. individuals, but they were more interested in the large series A, series B round somewhere else in, in North America or Europe, as opposed to going into the nitty gritty of investing into very young, high risk startups in climate tech, but also in other sectors. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe two very fundamental things we need to look yeah. at. If we well, that, that's surprising to hear in a way. I mean, maybe from a numbers point of view, nothing compared to the US or Europe. But Riyadh, would you be surprised at that? You've had a background in investing in startups here and, you know, SMEs particularly. There's a huge growth in, in, in that sector. Um, what, what would you say is, is, is sort of stymieing that entrepreneurial boost here uh, in the region? I think uh, success stories uh, and other uh, seeing and and basically uh, people getting experience to uh, going to other startups, right? You're seeing people who are launching their own startups after working for Kareem or Uber in the region, etc. Seeing this multiplier kind of effect or experience being uh, used. Uh, this is no longer people launching companies for the first time with not yeah. not, not a technical technology background. Right? These are people who worked and have a, a you know toolkit now. Uh, and they're applying it uh, to other businesses or other opportunities that they see. A lot of success stories like the exits that happened, whether it was uh, uh, Sue uh, acquired by Amazon or Kareem acquired by Uber, etc. Uh, this is what, what, what is pushing people in various sectors to innovate. Plus the availability of funding. I think last year was a, was a record year uh, in funding. Things now are, are, are changing a little bit, but uh, I think in a good way, in my opinion. Uh, so. We're going to see more 
uh, you know, uh, selective maybe selective, selective businesses, <laughs> better business model, uh, more careful entrepreneurs. Um, you know, uh, not just going in an unsustainable way, thinking that they can uh, use capital to solve all the issues, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Ivan, let me ask you a bit about the green bonds uh, question. That that you know that's obviously been used. Green bonds have been issued by 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 corporates uh, uh, to an extent, also in Europe, uh, quite a lot in terms of uh, and by governments. Uh, in terms of the finance market mechanics here in the Gulf and how mature they might be for that. Um, do we do we have a, sort of an outlet for that here, or 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 are we going to be relying more on sort of the private equity venture capital route? Um, to be honest, I don't have a firm opinion on that. I haven't I haven't heard this mentioned uh, too much. I think it's uh, you know when it is mentioned, I feel I feel like it's more of a mature market topic rather than the rather than the local market topic. So my expectation would be that we're probably going to be relying more on uh, on on private capital than 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 the public capital and the bonds that are traded in uh, in the market. But that's that's just the hypothesis. Uh, I don't have a very strong standing on that to be honest. Okay, uh, Stefan, just back to you on sort of how. The digitalization, the ecosystem within within companies, if you like, um, the the uptake of that and an appetite for that across the board. You know, again, looking at the region uh, and the mindset around that. Uh, you know, clearly the technology is there for companies to become more efficient in whatever sector they're in. Um, are they investing in in digitalization and in their ecosystem? Are, you, are, are we still seeing some resistance to that? Let me start on a on a neg on a negative maybe, <laughs> what what we haven't seen as much as in other parts of the world, particularly Europe, North America, bits of Asia, is open innovation to tra more traditional organizations, the large the large um, hydrocarbon producers, etc., tapping into the innovation capability that you would find in a younger startup ecosystem. We call them ambidextrous ecosystems, university and startup ecosystem traditional corporations and startup ecosystem to more quickly pilot innovative ideas, not to rely on internal R&D that might take well too long. We've seen that in, in other parts of the world. So we were missing that quite a bit. I know that Charger is, is making efforts in that regard. Um, I would have be quite possibly as well. So um, that's something we certainly would welcome. We've seen very good examples in industry verticals and in, in fairly young ecosystems, smaller ecosystems outside of the Silicon Valley's, New York's and London's where this particular collaboration, stakeholder collaboration, government, traditional industry, and the innovators uh, are really extremely fruitful and benefit from each other. So driving digital transformation, factor productivity, new products and services, even for the more traditional corporations with innovations not invented inside, but invented in a more open innovation environment. From our perspective, something that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't doesn't fix the problem in 12 months, but one of the most promising inroads we would we would see. As having said, not seen as much, um, and I'd, I'd only encourage everybody to to have a look at these opportunities again and, and learn from what's happening in other parts of the world. Actually, maybe 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 one thing worth mentioning from my side. I think we've kind of spoken about this kind of a supply demand imbalance, if you will, whereby the local ecosystem is that just just does not generate enough. Uh, supply of, uh, especially on the e side, right of uh, of 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 ESG. Uh, I think uh, you know worth mentioning that in Abu Dhabi, Hub Seventy One, the uh, ecosystem developer, they actually do have one of their one of their focus areas is clean tech in particular, and uh, through the programs that they are developing and, uh, and 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 executing on, what they are trying to do is to make up for the lack of local supply by trying to attract both entre entrepreneurs as well as established startups into the region uh, with a valid proposition that obviously here in the region we are very energy focused and you know if you want to be working in the on 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 energy and cleaner energy this yeah. is probably one of the best places in the world to actually do that work and by providing uh, kind of a you know a, a local launch pad if you will into the region kind of trying to attract 
uh, and kind of circumvent, if you will, the issues that we're facing locally with either the appetite or the, quite frankly, lack of capability, as we had, was, uh, was mentioning, kind of lack of local R&D, lack of local, uh, local technical ability. So I think there, there are such programs in place where we as a region are basically trying to position ourselves as kind of a global hub of innovation, also when it comes to energy, because of the position that we have in kind of the traditional energy markets and kind of try to attract both entrepreneurs as well as startups and provide them with the opportunity to kind of tackle that locally, but also at the international scale. Okay, and I mean, Riyadh, let me go to with that and ask you whether governments are making the business terms attractive enough for 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 companies or startups to, you know, for, for what uh, Ivan is referring to, you know, what we want to encourage those startups to come here and and, and build themselves into this incubator kind of uh, regional here. Um, but what about the business terms out there that might be offered in terms of making that attractive for people, whether it's in a country like the UAE? which is considered rather business friendly or Saudi, which is obviously a huge new market, uh, which has clearly got a very uh, aggressive agenda to to bring in new business, let's say, and bring in investors. Yeah, I think they are trying uh, and uh, in, in, in succeeding in, uh, in various ways. I think UAE is a very open place. Anybody can come, start a business, bring talent, bring capital, etc. It's not complicated. Uh, most for the most part uh, in Saudi, yes, it has uh, the government is making uh, is making things easier, but you know there remain some challenges to open up to own uh, to, uh, to 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 have to have the right structure uh, structure taxes etc. But uh, I think uh, the country has made great progress, especially uh, allowing people to come uh, to launch businesses, making the country friendlier in general to live in, as well as businesses to. Uh, launch a lot of the services around owning a business and hiring, um, etc., have become really simple in Saudi. Uh, and uh, we know because we opened the business ourselves as MVP in Saudi Arabia. Uh, a lot of uh, the government uh, uh, functions have been digitized to uh, to, uh, to an astonishing, astonishing extent. But uh, it, it remains a little bit. Uh, there remains a little, uh, some work to be done. If, to make a, the, the choice of Saudi better than other places for a startup to come, right? Okay, well, give us uh, give us your top top one top thing on the list that you think would have to be done to move this thing forward. I always like to end our conversation with asking everybody what would be on your wish list for, to shift uh, this 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 sort of venture capital private equity in this case uh, it, it, and to shift it into a greater volume in terms of directing it towards climate finance. It's, it's a tough for me. It's a tough one. I think um, uh, success stories probably somehow we need to create. Uh, you know, someone needs to lead the way and say that you know and, and launch a business, do something good, uh, maybe generate returns uh, for others to follow. Uh, I think for me, I, I, I believe in this model in general, uh, like re, not necessarily uh, government programs, etc., but rather actual uh, real stories that inspire others and uh, you know push people to do something similar stefan you had your hand up earlier there yeah i just wanted to comment on the and it's, it's maybe the, on the on the one wish list as well so we've, we've seen tremendous good development in regards to the administrative conditions to set up a business coming into the uae coming into ksa not really a problem um, saudi moonshot have done incredible work to really quickly set up a business couldn't be couldn't be easier stands out, compares favorably, if I compare that to, to parts of Europe, no doubt. Um, the other element is setting up a company, the other element is having a client. So do we need to do more work on the, particularly in B2B, on the corporates, on the traditional organizations, be they state owned or private, that are actually being our customer base? Why else would I come as, as, a, as a startup with a great idea, proof of concept, I got market traction somewhere in the US or in Europe or in Asia, why would I come? because I got the best environment to actually sell and further develop my product. So um, I guess that's that's where we need to have a look. It's it's open innovation. It's the culture of executives, the willingness of them in traditional organizations to collaborate. Um, I think that would be the most promising way. So really not so worried about the setting up a business. I think this has been done. Um, compliments to many, many parts of the region and doing that extremely well. Now it's the next step in really opening up this demand here. Yeah? Where, where do I find my clients? Yeah. 
Ivan, what would be your, your top list of priorities for, to shift? If, if, I, if I could have it my, my way, I would love to have more technical talent in particular. Uh, I think here in the region, I think we've done a lot of good work, uh, but, uh, you know, obviously raising uh, raising the right talent. I mean, that's that's kind of a multi-decade kind of a game. And I know there are a lot of efforts to 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 make that happen, working with the schools, with the universities, not only from kind of a technical capability point of view, but also to what has been kind of commented on before, uh, the, the cultural point of view, the appetite to risk point of view, the role modeling point of view. I think as we are working towards that, I think the programs to attract international talent that, uh, uh, this country in particular, I think UAE has done tremendously well in, 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 in all sorts of other industries. Uh, I think they are very helpful uh, to both kind of uh, 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 build the initial bridges while we're kind of trying to cross that long term gap gap, as well as kind of create those initial ecosystems and uh, obviously help the help the local talent uh, be trained, be mentored, be nurtured uh, to 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 a point where they are going to be able to uh, to start a lot of those startups and kind of uh, uh, address that uh, supply gap that we that we currently have. So talent for sure. As you said, that's a long game, uh, but it is talent comes up across the board, actually, uh, on, in, in, in every segment. Uh, and of course, there's a shortage of good talent across the world at the moment in terms of a lot of industries trying to attract people back in uh, after after a lull or, or at least a diversion during COVID. So, well, gentlemen, thank you so much. I'm afraid our half an hour is up. Thank you very much for joining us on the Microsoft Middle East and Africa Sustainability uh, Dialogues uh, this week. Thank you for your input. Uh, and best of luck. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure Thank you. meeting.